Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and today we're gonna be discussing dependency injection and some of the new feature that has been introduced in .NET 8. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be taking our application that we always work with. We're gonna be adding a couple of services there. We're gonna be utilizing dependency injection so we can actually utilize them. And then we're gonna be discussing some of the new features that .NET 8 has brought into the table. So let's get started. So first of all, let me go to my code. And inside my code here, I'm gonna, inside formula1.api, I'm gonna create a new directory and I'm gonna call this services. And what I wanna do here is I'm gonna create a service which can allow me to send emails so for that I'm gonna create an interface folder and inside this interface folder I'm gonna create an interface and I'm gonna call it I email service pretty straightforward and basically this email service can have one method in it for now we're gonna put task bull and it's gonna call send email and here we're gonna basically pass the email address and the body so in order for us to make this video uh, simple and not uh, like a few hours long, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be mimicking this email. So we're not going to be really integrating. The main purpose of this is to discuss dependency injection, but basically the email implementation is not really important at this time. So right now what we have here is we have this email service as an interface. So what I want to do is I want another implementation. So once in my implementation, I'm going to create a class called email service. And to make it more specific, for example, I'm going to utilize my sending grid email service. So I'm going to call it sending grid email service. And basically here, all I want to do is I want to inherit uh, or basically utilize my interface my email service. So I can remove this. And here basically it's telling me that I'm not have not implemented this member yet. So let me implement it here. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to say console.write line. Email has been sent. Email to let's make it a string interpolation. So to email has been sent. I'm going to put here a new line and I'm going to put this as the body. Fair enough. So this is going to be the console.write line that's going to appear once I have basically sent or executed this method. And here I'm going to say return true. So we can mimic an email function. We're going to put await task.delay. And I'm going to put for three seconds. And here I'm going to make this async. And now this should work. So basically here what we're doing, let's make it two seconds. Every time I call this, we're going to be waiting for two seconds. Then we're going to print this out and then I'm going to be returning true. Okay, perfect. So now that I have created my fake email service and I basically did all of the interface for it, now what I need to do is I need to inject it. So inside my program.cs, before I do the builder.build, .build, I need to inject it here. So I'm gonna do the following. Builder, so I'm gonna put builder.services.add singleton and I'm gonna put here I email service and this is gonna be send grid email service. And now basically if I want to utilize this inside my application, so I'm going to go to my controllers and I'm going to go for my drivers here. Let me inject it here. So I'm going to put here private read only I email service, email service, and I'm going to utilize my constructor injection to utilize this, to, in to initialize this. So let's do it right now. I email service, email service. And now I can actually utilize it however I want. Let's put it here. And let's say after I create a driver, where is it? Let's, uh, after I add a driver, I'm going to send this. So I'm going to put here email service that send email. And the email is going to be for the admin, which is going to be, let's say, muhammad at test.com. And I'm going to add here new driver has has been added. And I'm going to pass the driver name so we can make it more interactive. Driver dot first name. and let's make this async okay perfect so now that i have this fake and basically a uh, mimicking of a email service let us try to run it and see what do we get so now if we click on run perfect now we can see it's running on port 5000 so let's open this in our web browser so now inside my web browser here i'm just gonna put my url and whenever i create a driver let's try it out so first name is gonna be muhammad Last name is gonna be Lawand. Driver number, I'm gonna put one, two, three. And let's keep the date of birth as it is. Execute, we got back the 201 response, which is perfect. And now if we go back to the logs, we need to see that this email has been, been sent. So we can see here an email has been sent to Muhammad. And this is the body that we have. So now we can see that this actually is working. It actually mimicking an email service and we are basically utilizing dependency injection to do so. So that's really good. 
But what happened right now if we have another email server that we want to utilize? So we want to utilize, for example, one email server for transient, another email server for basically notifications like this, or basically want to utilize one email server as a backup to another. And this is where the new features within .NET 8 comes into place. So what I'm going to do for now, I'm just going to add another implementation for my email service. I'm going to stop this and I'm going to click on add and another class. And for this one, I'm just going to call it postmark email service. And what I'm going to do here, actually, I'm going to also implement my email service. And it's going to ask me that to implement the default method, I'm just going to copy paste what we had here. And I'm just going to modify it a bit. So here I'm going to say postmark and I'm going to say instead of two, I'm going to put one second. So it make it a bit faster. And basically here I'm going to say after this service postmark. So we can just like have a view of it. Actually, let's make it first. And I'm going to add here the same line. I'm going to make this as Sunday grid. Okay, great. So now that I have added these two, so now I have two implementation of my email service interface. So one is going to be utilizing my postmark and the other one is going to be utilizing Sunday grid. So now that I have my postmark and my Sunday grid available here. So in case I want to actually utilize my Sunday grid again, or my postmark, what I need to do, I need to go to my program.cs. We can see here, I have already my Sunday grid implementation. So what happened if I want to add my postmark implementation? I need to do something similar. So builder.services.add singleton. And I'm going to say here, I email service, and I'm going to put here postmark email service. And now basically here, what I have is I have my two email services implemented. But now let us uh, see what happens. So right now inside my diverse controller, I'm already having the same implementation here. So I have my email service and I told it to do it automatically dynamically injected into my application. And basically once I done that, I want to execute it and see what's happening. So now we're running my application. Let me go back to my web browser. And inside my web browser here, I'm just gonna put here Muhammad one, no one one, change the number to three, three, two or five, four, three. Let's keep the same date, execute. We got a 201. And now if I go back to the logs, uh, I'm sending through postmark, but I did not tell it that I wanna send it here through postmark. I wanted to basically utilize my sending grid. I did not tell it that it needs to switch from sending grid to postmark. So what is happening? So let us understand this. So inside my DI container, so let's imagine this box here is our DI container. And basically inside this, what do we have? We have different services. So right now what we have here is we're gonna have my database service. I'm gonna have here my email service. Uh, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna be more specific. So this is my, uh, first of all, it was my Sunday grid, Sunday grid email service. We had our logging service as well available for us. And also what did I have here? I also had my postmark email service. So now what do I have? I have four different services existing inside my DI container. So this is my dependency injection container. So inside my dependency injection container, whenever any of my classes are actually asking for something, what's going to happen? So let's imagine this is a class. I'm going to draw it here. And let's say this is my driver's class, driver's controller class. And basically my driver's controller class is asking for an implementation for an I email service. So here it's asking, let's get another small box inside. It's asking for an I email service implementation. Perfect. So here, what's going to happen? So all of these going to have some kind of an interface that they belong to. So let's add them. So here, for example, for this, we're going to have an I email service, I email service. Let's copy this. We're going to have it also to this one here for the logging service. We're going to have a logger, I logger, for example, and for the database here, I'm going to have my I unit of work. Perfect. So now that I have these, these are basically going to be connected directly to this. So my logger is going to be connected to my logger service. My database is going to be connected to my database service. My email service here is going to be connected to Sandy grid and my email service here as well. They're going to be connected to my postmark. So now within this current implementation, what's going to happen? If my driver controller goes to my dependency injection container and tell it, okay, I need an implementation for I service, what's going to happen? Because we are injecting this uh, inside my program.cs in this order. So let me go to my program.cs. So we can see here, first I have my database, then I have my, my two email services available here. So we can see the first one is going to be Sunday grid and then it's going to be postmark. So if we go here, we can see Sunday grid at first and then postmark. So whenever a request is coming to my dependency injection container, asking for an implementation for email servers, what's going to happen? 
the dependency injection is going to return the latest one. And in this case, the latest one is going to be the postmark. So this one is going to go. It's going to be injected directly. It's not going to be Sandy Grid, although I want Sandy Grid to be injected. And this is going to be the default implementation based on the ordering that we're going to be needing. So how can we resolve this? And this is going to be the main feature that .NET 8 has introduced. And this is called keyed, keyed services. So if we go back here, instead of relying on having a singleton, what I want to do is I'm going to do the following. Add keyed singleton. I'm going to remove this and here it's going to ask for any types of object to identify them. I'm going to say this is going to be identified by Sandy Grid because it's the name that I'm going to be utilizing. As well here it's going to be keyed singleton as well and it is, this is going to be postmark. So having postmark and Sandy Grid here available into the, in the implementation of this uh, injection as well having add keyed singleton so keyed basically means here that these services they're going to have unique identifications whenever they are being utilized so let me remove this so these here implementation they're going to have some kind of a unique identifier let's make it this bigger and this identifier here it will be sandy grid and this identifier here it will be postmark again i'm oversimplifying here but that this is basically in essence how it works and basically this identifier is gonna be, we can think about this now inside my the I container as has key value pair. For this uh, for this key, we have this value implemented. So for this key here, it's gonna belong to this one. And for this key here, it's gonna belong to this one. So we have these two keys, or basically uh, referring to these two services, which directly are utilizing my I uh, service, uh, I email service. So that's all fine. And now we understood how actually inside my DI container they are referred, and this is how my driver controller it works. So let's test it now and see th why this is not, has not, and let's see how this is not complete yet to solve our problem. So let's stop this, let's run this again, and let's go to our Swagger page here. I'm gonna put Muhammad2, Muhammad2, and I'm just gonna change my number to let's say 798 and I'm gonna click on execute and here we can see that once I try to execute this the dependency injection said okay you are attempting to activate something but it did not work and basically it's saying that inside my controller here I have attempted to activate the email service but my implementation here is not clear because basically right now through my program.cs I'm telling it that there is two implementation for my I email service and it doesn't really know to which one it needs to actually implement should it use the Sunday grid one should it use the postmark one I did not tell it which one to use so in order for me to resolve this uh, what I need to do I need inside my drivers controller I need to do the following so here, whenever I'm implementing my I email service, I need to first of all add the following. So I need to add this, I need to add from key services. And then here I need to specify the name that I have specified inside my program.cs. So in this so in this scenario, it's gonna be my Sunday grid. So I'm gonna copy this, put it here and add it. So now if I wanna utilize this, what's gonna happen? I'm just gonna put stop, run this again, go back to my web browser and I'm gonna click on execute again. And now we can see I got my uh, response back. And if I go back to the logs, we can see here I'm using Sunday Grid again rather than utilizing Postmark. But this is not uh, all. So for example, the really nice thing about it is I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to add a comma here. And I'm going to call this. I'm going to have it much more uh, detailed. So here is going to be Sunday Grid email service. So let me update this. Where is it here? Perfect. Actually, I need to email all of them. So let's do it right now quickly. So this one is going to be right click, uh, refactor, rename, just so we can make it consistent. I'm going to call it send grid email service next and next. So now I have renamed it. And this one here, we can see it's utilizing my Sandy grid email service. And what I want to do also, I'm going to call this instead of Sandy grid, the other one, I'm going to go to my program. Let's see, the other one's called postmark. So I'm going to come here. For my postmark, I'm going to make the other services postmark and I'm going to utilize this one here. So I'm going to put postmark email service and I'm going to initialize it here. So instead of Sandy Grid, I'm just going to put postmark and here I'm just going to initialize it. And here's going to be postmark email service, a lot of typos. Okay, perfect. So now what do I have here? I have two services actually injected into my application. I have my, uh, my sender. Uh, Sandy grid and I have my postmark. So the nice thing about this as well, I can now specify which one I want to use. So for example, here I can add logic, which we're not going to be doing right now. So I can say, if this service is down, use the other 
email service. So now here I can, for example, say in case this is down, I can put, let just me create a random variable here. So I'm going to say if false, which means that the service is down, I'm going to put this here. Else I'm going to utilize the other service. So I'm going to put await and uh, postmark email service dot send email and here I'm going to put Muhammad at dust.com and I'm going to specify the body which is going to be as well with a string concatenation new driver has been added and I'm going to put the driver's name so now here in this scenario I have two email services automatically injected into my service uh, into my controller I can utilize both of them however I want here for, for simplicity's sake I added a hard-coded false but let's try it out so now if I run this if I go back to my swagger page let me add this here instead of two I'm going to make it three 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 and three execute now we can say it worked and now we can see we are relying on postmark so let me switch this up I'm going to put this equal true and I'm going to stop this and run this again I'm going to go back here and again I'm going to make this another new driver for four and four execute we can see here now it has succeeded and now we can see we're utilizing sending grid so this is really a powerful feature that actually provided for us through dotnet 8 we're taking dependency injection to the next level we are actually utilizing and having multiple services relying on the same interface directly enabled inside my controllers and here basically if we take a look at this if we take a look at this now we're basically telling my email drive my email service here that i need to utilize it's actually can utilize any of this we're not relying anymore on the ordering that my dependency injection container will provide. This is not going to be the main limitation anymore. What we're doing here is we're actually uh, relying on, on, the, on, the, on the identifier that we have provided for my services. Before that, we needed to utilize third-party services in order for us to utilize the keyed, or we needed to re rely on link in order for us to uh, rely on the dependency injection and then go through the ordering of them. It wasn't really a, a, a good way because for example if for any reason we messed up the ordering or once we updated the code we changed the ordering of our services it's going to create a mess but now because we are actually relying on a unique identifier and utilizing these keys we are actually able to utilize them however we want so this is going to be the video for today uh, i hope uh, it was beneficial if you have any questions please make sure you put them in the comments down below and thank you very much for watching